Not my YouTube douche light. Oh, I'm blocking it. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. With the weather slowly getting a little better, I've managed to spend more time outside with the Bronco. With the upcoming travel season quickly approaching, I finally managed to get the roof rack installed. If you'll recall an episode or two ago, I went about preparing the white painted Bronco roof with some paint protection film and lining the roof rack clamp brackets with some adhesive foam. Well this week, when the sun actually decided to pay us a visit, I went about getting the roof rack finally mounted onto the Bronco. The install was pretty straightforward, apart from some minor holdover issues because of the prototype design. With the opportunity to basically start over again with a fresh new Bronco, I wanted to take the time and see if an alternate roof setup might be more practical. Maybe I can turf the Skinny Warrior cargo basket and instead chalk the plano boxes straight to the extruded crossbars. This would probably save me 20 plus pounds of roof rack weight. This would ideally also give me the space to lay the 20 liter gas can down on its back instead of the way I had it before, standing straight up. Another change I wanted to make is to the solar panel setup. While it was cool to have a framed retractable roof mounted panel on the Bronco, it was heavy, complicated, and rather expensive to implement. I think instead I might go with a foldable, portable solar array. And of course, if I'm going to flesh out different load ideas on the roof, it stands to reason that I should also revisit the setup in the back of the Bronco. My last truck was nicely customized for overlanding, I thought. The Valkyrie roof rack, of course, the Milwaukee packouts, and a pair of plano boxes that stowed everything I needed. The best part of the setup, obviously, was the rear seat delete and the custom load floor, which would not have been possible without the generous help of my old friend Dino over on his channel, Dino's Tinker Shed. The fridge slide out, the cleverly designed access cover, and of course, the auxiliary lithium backup power, 120 volt inverter and charging hardware made extended travel relatively worry free. While I managed to stow basically everything I needed for remote travel, with use I began to think the layout could be just a little bit better. More refined and easier access to the more frequently used items, just to make camp set up quicker and meal prep easier. This kind of refinement thought process probably holds true for everyone who travels by overland. The setup and layout is constantly evolving. This time around, without the space needed to give my last dog Jackson the space to sleep in the back of the Bronco, I began to wonder if I could maybe get away with a 50% rear seat delete instead of axing them both as before. And of course while I'm at it, it would definitely make more sense to have the Milwaukee packouts rear facing and not attached to the slide out behind the fridge like before. It would definitely make access 100 times easier. But to make room for the slide out on the driver's side floor, it looks like it may be going to need a bit of a haircut. But I think overall it's going to work. And maybe I can convince my woodworking maestro friend Dino to build me a polo cabinet drawer under the pack out boxes. I think there will be a little bit of headroom for it and it would make a great place to store some of the cooking gear. It's nice to finally get everything moving forward on the new Bronco Overland build. As with the same plan last year, I want to try and have everything ready to go for Victoria Day long weekend, which up here in Canada is also known as May 2-4 weekend. The weekend is basically the official kickoff to summer, and for many teenagers growing up in Canada, the long weekend is a kind of rite of passage, basically an all-out party celebration with your best friends. For us here in southwestern Ontario, Party Central was at Grand Bend and the Ipawash Beach area. One of the most memorable May 2 force for me was a time my friends and I rented a 20-foot U-Haul truck, outfitted it with furniture and beer, and hit the highway. This was going to be our temporary home and Party Central for wherever we ended up parking it. If I recall correctly, while loaded up and headed out for the weekend, it promptly broke down on the 401 and left us stranded until a replacement was brought in. Of course, as it turned out, this was just the beginning of what the weekend had in store for us. With a disposable Kodak film camera as our only witness to the goings on that weekend, the first night found us staying at a beach parking lot and we somehow caught the attention of the provincial police while handhold lighting off some fireworks. Of course, 
This being way back in 1989, and me being the only one in our group at the ripe old age of 19, the legal drinking age in Ontario, the local constabulary had a hard time believing that all 13 cases of beer belonged to me. So after confiscating all our beer and towing away and impounding our U-Haul, we were left to spend the night outside on the beach beside Lake Huron in May. The 10 or 11 of us, of course, being the mature, responsible and well-equipped for any eventuality, had everything under control with two sleeping bags and one pound of uncooked ground beef. I don't think any of us actually slept that night, but the following day was thankfully warm and sunny. We sent out two of the individuals from our party, venturing off that morning to successfully recover the U-Haul and pay the impound fees. We spent the remainder of the day hanging out at the beach, listening to music, sober of course, and having a good time with good friends. I think when I finally made it home, I went to bed and I didn't get up until the following night. Good times. Nowadays, it's hard making time to get together with friends anymore. Everyone's grown up, moved away, and some of them just aren't with us anymore. But we will always have the memories. Thanks for watching everyone. I'm gonna go check out the price on some of the U-Hauls and we'll see you next time.